So the South African Communist Party is celebrating its 100th anniversary. In fact, the celebrations were used to lash out against those who want to, quote, destabilize the country in response to former President Jacob Zuma's arrest. For more on this moment, let's bring in the SA Communist Party's first Deputy General Secretary. That's Soli Mabaila, who joins us via our video link. Soli, always great to chat to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Perhaps let me begin by saying congratulations in order. It is a milestone. It's also a great moment of reflection, isn't it? Um, how you. would you reckon the SACP has done thus far, considering the events even of the month gone by? Well, overall, in the last 100 years, uh, we consider to have done very well. I think uh, we marked an important milestone in which uh, the SACP militantly served the working class of our country in the struggle against colonialism and against the apartheid uh, oppression and therefore uh, reaping the, the wrath of the apartheid regime by being the first organization to be banned uh, in this country. But we have served well, uh, working together with our allies in the liberation struggle, and perhaps uh, joined the liberation movement as a whole in making some of the greatest sacrifices for the freedoms that we enjoy today. So that should um, uh, summarize the, 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 the 100 years of our centenary. Of course, in the period, there have been many witnesses as well in which we, we believe we could have improved and we did uh, uh, in our statement self-critic ourselves for certain things that we could have done right. But overall, we're satisfied with the milestone we have achieved and we're looking forward to the next few years uh, to make sure that our people completely are free from exploitation of capital mm. and therefore end of oppression as a whole. It was very interesting to note that, you know, in the commemorations today, a lot of time was actually spent reflecting on what we should make of the unrest in the country. From a lot of, call it, even leftist intellectuals that have been on, even on this platform, a lot of what happened there was, as far as they're concerned, was capitalism and its adverse effects manifesting in our society. It does beg the question, how well do you reckon leftist ideology even is resonating not only with our society but more specifically with our government yes i think uh, socialism is uh, surely the alternative to the barbarity of the capitalist system that uh, generally divides people along racial lines along class lines and therefore make other people feel insignificant and therefore that's why ultimately if we were to end uh, all forms of uh, exploitation which are derived from uh, forms of production. That's where poverty uh, is generated. That's where unemployment uh, is generated. That's where the source of inequalities that we talk about in our country are generated. Therefore, it is always, uh, and at the current uh, levels of uh, the uh, brutality of the capitalist system, an alternative. It's not just uh, for us as the Communist Party, that is why we've reflected this in our statement, it's not just a matter for theoretical uh, engagements mm -hmm. at coffee tables, but it's a matter for practical engagement. Hence, over the last decade, for instance, or even two, if you take into account the SACP's programs, we have tackled issues that are today a menace in our society, uh, albeit that uh, the capitalist system and the ruling class in this country that controls the economy and sometimes ignored some of our calls. But nonetheless, and we hate to say that we told you so, but in, in any uh, event from uh, our land program uh, that we launched in the early 2000s from the financial sector campaigns uh, uh, programs, you can see the widening uh, inequality gap in our country is derived from the struggles that we we'll continue to wage. And we'll continue to wage those struggles until our people are free from exploitation and oppression of the capitalist system. The great paradox, of course, at least according to some, is that there are some leaders of the party that actually are in government. With 100 years gone by, do you think the SACP has done enough to try explain what many people view as a contradiction? Like, how do you have a leader of the SACP leading in a government that is largely, call it even, appealing to neoliberalist ideology? Generally, the movement is a progressive movement mm. headed by the ANC, and therefore we're not ashamed to serve in its government and to serve our people in whatever way possible uh, within that framework of the movement. And of course, given the context of our revolution, when we displaced the apartheid regime from power, it was necessary that the revolutionary forces uh, get united, launch a massive uh, counterforce against the apartheid regime. As you know, 
under the negotiated settlement, which we have also indicated that was riddled with a sharing of blood of our people, sacrifices of our matayas, uh, it was important that the SACP couldn't look sectarianly on its own, rather than uh, uh, because in doing so, it will have weakened the movement. Instead, we joined forces with our allies to completely dislodge the apartheid regime. That is why we characterized 1994 as a democratic breakthrough, a period in which our people, after centuries of oppression, were accorded an opportunity to self-govern. That process of self-governance is something that is uh, also under transformation itself that we want to change so that we can have a complete people's government, not just mere representative uh, 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 government that we have at the moment. So in that regard, I think um, uh, we are happy for the role that we've played inside the African National Congress, inside government, in other spheres of deployment of our, our, our cadres. So there's nothing that uh, we can't even say the Communist Party uh, is, can be judged specifically on its own because we have collectively uh, participated in a government that is not necessarily a, a communist government. There have been a lot of talks in the past of the, the tripartite alliance having some kind of split. I wonder if you think whether that, if that were to happen, if you think the SACP would actually be better off. I mean, even just in your language this morning, it almost feels like the assessment is, yes, we've done well. Of course, there's a whole lot more to do. But in part, the restrictions have come with our allegiance to the governing party. Not our allegiance to the governing party, our allegiance to the people, to, mm. their, to their struggles. And that the ANC, as a liberation movement, head in the alliance, has constituted uh, the central point that represents the general interest of the people through the National Democratic Revolutionary Program, which we characterize as a thoroughgoing transformation program. If that program is implemented well, uh, we could go far as a country. It's a, it's a program to end all forms of inequalities, both racial, class, gender inequalities. And if you look into the major challenges facing our country today, are within this presence of class, race, and gender that is facing our country. And therefore, our participation in that space it's very, very uh, 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 clear. But nonetheless, we do believe that uh, we could uh, uh, um, increase the pace of transformation in our country, and we need a revolutionary ANC, not just any other ANC. That is why we've also said that the country, the way South Africa is, in any form, it requires a multi-class organization of the ANC type. And we have chosen that uh, the organization to be the ANC. That's why we also want to work to make sure that the ANC is united and is able to deal with its own challenges so that it can continue to, to lead the National Democratic Revolution. But nonetheless, ourselves are continuing to participate and ensuring that key programs of the National Democratic Revolution yeah. do not fall on the wayside. It's important, of course, for the communist voice to be clear, even in seminal moments like the one perhaps that many people might find or might say Zwilim Kize finds himself in. I'm sure I don't need to give you any background about how the now suspended minister is in the throes of all kinds of allegations to do with digital vibes. Given the picture you've just painted, where does the SACP stand on a scandal like this, considering what it's allegedly taken from the people, the people that the SACP stands for? Well, for the SACP, it's well known in this country that uh, we, we, we led the campaign against corruption uh, as a, at a mass scale. We launched our big uh, anti-corruption program early in 2010. And before that, we have been involved in uh, uh, sporadic campaigns against corruption. But we launched that as a massive uh, a, a campaign that has continued today, leading to us being the first organization to call for the establishment of the Zondo Commission to deal with the industrial scale looting of state resources through what we characterize as a, a, a corporate capture of the state or normally state capture. We are the first to do so. So that means that we continue to uh, make sure that our voice is heard and we mobilize our communities and our society and our people in government uh, to make sure that uh, they whistleblow corruption wherever it, uh, it, it exists. So in this regard, we call for those with uh, information against corruption to come forward and for state in institutions to play their role and make sure that it makes arrests where necessary and do prosecutions and make sure that the law takes its course. So that as the SACP 
perhaps more than any other party in the country. Of course, it's not a competition, mm. but there's no doubt that we have been the leading voice in this country in this regard. The president has had the report from the SIU for quite some time now. What's your call to him? Of course, uh, like, like all other people, once he has got all the information, I hear him say that uh, he has information, he's waiting for this and that particular issue. Uh, we will ask, ask, ask him to act as soon as is possible. Of course, he must be satisfied that when he, he, he takes action, he's, he's supported by all relevant documents. And I think that at an appropriate time, and we hope it's quite soon, the president will, uh, will be able to express himself in this regard. The perception, according to no, uh, many people, is that there's no other way out here for the suspended minister. I mean, he either resigned or he's fired. Is that a sentiment you share? Well, that depends on what the president has or what is on the table. What we have heard are snippets uh, from, the, from the media report. But yeah, and what, and what do you make from what you have if heard? Evidence, if there's evidence, not that the one that you know from the from media reports, but the point is that if there's evidence against wrongdoing, certainly action must be taken. It doesn't matter what position you have. It has to be taken as long as there's information on wrongdoing. That will always uh, uh, insist on calling for. It has nothing to do specifically with this or that minister. It's across the board. Absolutely. And perhaps that's a way of also reflecting on another issue, without a doubt, that's probably plaguing the mind of the president, and that's to do with a possible reshuffle of his executive. I mean, again, I'm, I'm putting these to you solely because in some respects, the SACP has spent some time today reflecting on where we are as a country. And according to many, we're in this position because of a lack of a leadership capability at that level. As far as you're concerned, is the time ripe for something like a cabinet reshuffle? In a revolution, the time is now. Um, of course, the president may consider many other things. For instance, uh, as when, when people uh, expected him to reshuffle, I mean, uh, less than six months when he took office, the country went into lockdown I, after this uh, new mandate uh, because of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So it's, it's difficult to, to reshuffle during that particular period. But nonetheless, there's necessity for changes to, to take place. And I think that uh, we should be able to engage in that space so that appropriate interventions are, are, are made as soon as is possible. Particularly, we are much more concerned about the pace of transformation that our economy is taking and our revolution is taking. We're stagnating too much, and we believe that government can do more in terms of uh, uh, certain decisions that are made, and also not just at national level, but also going down to provinces and even to, to municipalities, where also there have been very, very serious problems uh, of lack of transformation and uh, even uh, 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 access to services by the people has been uh, severely uh, hampered. And that is, is really worrying us as the SACP. There are many other areas that would like uh, uh, our posture as a revolutionary movement to really improve drastically. And it is in this regard that we we'll continue to engage our alliance partners to make sure that uh, appropriate action is taken, serious interventions are made across the board from municipalities right up to ministerial level. But at the core of these interventions is to ensure that South Africa doesn't continue to imprison itself within a neoliberal economic uh, austerity measures that we have embraced uh, ourselves on, and that have degenerated our ability to make state interventions and improve the economic life of the people. If we get rid of that, I think uh, there will be many other things, uh, that uh, opportunities that will open up for the country to begin to resolve multiple challenges that we face. Soluma Paila, thanks very much indeed for your indulgence. I uh, really appreciate your time. Soluma Paila is the SACP's first Deputy General Secretary. Once again, thanks very much indeed.